So, Staten Island, New York, may be poised to break away from New York City. This after Councilman Joe Borelli tweeted that the Brexit vote was, in his words, inspiring, saying that his constituents on the island want their borough to be free of the city. Back in 1993, you may recall, Staten Island tried unsuccessfully then to break away and form their own local government. 65% of Staten Islanders were in favor of doing that, but the State Assembly blocked the measure by delaying it until it was too late to vote on the plan. So, should they stay or should they go? Joining me now to answer that question is Newsday political editor Jack Sirica. Jack, welcome. Nice to talk with you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So let, let's focus first on Staten Island. And we hear the council members saying, you know, this was inspiring, uh, giving us the, 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 the idea, the impetus to perhaps do this ourselves. Let's talk about practically, could it happen? And then should it happen? And let, let's stay, start with the should it first. From the perspective of Staten Islanders, why would they want to break away? Well, you know, I think a lot of people there, with you know, with some reason, for many, many years, have considered themselves a uh, a little bit of a fifth wheel in New York City government. It's out of the way. It's not Manhattan. Uh, it's represented typically by Republicans, which is uh, goes against the Democratic grain of city government. Uh, so, I mean, I think that, you know, and there's more uh, kinship almost sometimes with New Jersey than, than New York City, sort of culturally. So, I, I mean, I can see that why this crops up every now and again. What would be the impediments for Staten Island? Uh, first of all, practically speaking, how they would do it, and then secondly, what that would mean for them in terms of their day-to-day -day existence? Well, you obviously have the issue of city services, which you would think would be a big issue. You know, you have the Staten Island Ferry, which is uh, a, a lifeline to New York City. Uh, you have numerous other New York City municipal services that would be, I would think, in question. Uh, as you said in the, uh, in the prior effort, you've got the state legislature to deal with. They'd have to approve it. Uh, taxation issues, uh, all sorts of stuff. Um, I mean, I think on the pro side, so to speak, you know, I mean, I think people are, you know, you might make an argument to people that would be attractive that, you know, they have to, they would have to fund less of services, you know, to fund less, send less to city government, so to speak, health and hospitals corporation. So, I, you know, I can see some of the arguments, but I think to detach from the huge Bank of New York City services would be a, a major deal. Well, Jack, I'm glad we have you with us because there's a lot going on here in other New York news. The congressional primaries are tomorrow, and they're some of the most contentious elections in the state, with seats being vacated by outgoing heavy hitters. For instance, Charlie Rangel leaving his seat. For New Yorkers, the primary may hold the key to the balance of power in Washington. And considering New York ranks as one of the 10 states with the worst voter turnouts in the country, the consequences of not casting a vote matters that much more, especially during this presidential election season. So, Jack, I'm going to ask you what we should be keeping our eyes on as the results come in. Let me ask you um, a, a first question before we get to specifics. Um, a lot of people are saying, well, why, why is there a primary going on now in June? We had a primary a couple of months ago. Why not all together? What's the answer to that? Well, this is, <clears throat> excuse me, an oddity. Uh, this is due to a federal court order. The uh, by scheduling these things at the end of June instead of September, it uh, the uh, the reasoning goes: you give military uh, personnel serving overseas uh, time to uh, to vote and get their ballots in, and that's that's the reason for it. So it's a very odd time. I think this is only the second go around for us in New York of this June date, and no one expects it, and it's on no one's radar, and it's you know primary turnout is low anyway, so no one is expecting much turnout here tomorrow. Uh, let me focus on a couple of districts for you and get some sort of headlines from you, if we could. Uh, District 13, uh, for many reasons, is important. One of the significant reasons why people are focusing on it is it's a district that uh, Representative Charles Rangel had, had represented for so many years, stepping down now. Uh, give us a sense of what's going to, what, what are the major issues there and the major battles being fought out in District 13? Well, in that race, you've got a nine-person Democratic primary, which is uh, chaos to begin with for the, from the party, Democratic Party's perspective. Uh, you have Keith Wright, who is uh, Charlie Rangel's um, pick. Uh, you have uh, Senator Espeat, who, is running, who ran against Charlie Rangel twice in primaries and came very close and thinks this is probably his best chance to get that seat. 
Uh, you have uh, Guillermo Linares, who is uh, also of Dominican descent, as is Espeat. Uh, who's who has been uh, who has tussled with Espiat for years and years, and run against him, and uh, and you know, those are probably the three uh, you know top candidates in that race. Uh, and you have a lot of history in that district. I mean, you have Adam Clayton Powell IV, who's the Sodom son of Adam Clayton Powell Jr., whom Charlie Wrangell uh, dethroned back in uh, in 1970. So there's a tremendous amount of history to this race. And Charlie has been there, as I say, for 40-some years, and, uh, but for a little bit better luck, if the Democrats had kept control of the House, he would have been chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, the, the key tax writing committee, years ago. So he is a, uh, a long-standing presence and, and very well-liked. So I would think his nod means something, but it's a very diverse... Uh, district, there, which... Last quick question for you. There are a lot of other uh, other districts that are going to be hotly contested. But bigger picture for me, why are these races important nationally? Well, New York. Well, if the Democrats have any hope of picking of cutting down their very uh, uh, their sort of disturbing minority status in the House because they're forty some seats uh, uh, behind the Republicans. Uh, they're looking at Trump as potentially their best way in to pick up some seats this time. Trump, uh, they're banking on he that he's a, a, you know, he loses, that he's unpopular, especially in a liberal uh, area like the New York City region. So he's a big factor in the race in the third district out here on Long Island. For for example, you've got five Democrats. All the mailings pretty much have t Trump on the front of them. You don't want this. Don't vote. You know, I'll fight him. Mm. Well, there's a lot going on. Jack Sirica from Newsday. Jack, thanks again for spending some time with us. We'll look forward to talking with you down the road as all of these continue to percolate out there. Jack, be well. Thanks.